like Friday class, you know, you do it. Try to have, you know, have a little technical difficulties, but I think we got we got to start it this, this go around. So I'm just waiting on the room to fill up a little bit. Got this iron sheet six in the background. Now, if you haven't checked out, you know, Kingland Moors, um, make sure you, you do. And as always, you know, we, we let people know, check out rvjpublications.com, um, morrisdirectory.com, activemorris.com, and, you know, you can get connected, you can find other active moors who are like-minded, you know, in your area, and really, we, we want to make sure that everybody is moving towards uh, self-government, you know, but not just governing of, of your own household, but the community, right? Because as we go forward, we know that um, we're going to have certain challenges and, uh, you know, certain lacking uh, necessary supports, so to speak, but... If we're able to, uh, you know, really ground our, our thoughts here and make some sound plans for the future, we might just be all right, you know. Um, but oftentimes, you know, when you've got a lot of energy in motion, um, better known as emotions, just flying around everywhere, you, um, you know, you've, you've got a lot of uh, hot air. <laughs> so to speak, and very little direction, unfortunately. But as we study, and as we study, and as we study, we will come to certain conclusions, um, particularly when you look at the Constitution um, and the structure of it, right? And I know a lot of people are, are upset because of how things are kind of, you know, looking right now, but just know, um, as, as often as the case looks can be deceiving, right? So with that in mind, we want to make sure that everybody understands, you know, the basic premise and the, you know, let's back up and, and make sure that we, we cover some things. All right. We as Moors, right? are not Negroes, Blacks, Coloreds, African Americans, Coons, Jigaboos, you know, what have you. Um, and any of those particular laws, statutes, codes, or ordinances that may apply to those uh, corporate wards uh, are distinct from one who would be uh, considered a national right, of the land. Um, oftentimes the words aboriginal or indigenous come up, but we, we never want to forget the political status of nationality, right, because it's, it's through the nationality and through that understanding that one is reattached, right, to the land, okay, and as we studied, you know, our um, proclamations, you know, and declarations were able to, to see the manifest activation of that in written form, right? And overstanding and understanding, you know, how the law works and, you know, just keeping in mind the, the strength or the importance of notice, right? Once that's out there, you know, on the record, for the record, you've, you've got... Um, a means, right, to point to or to say, all right, I'm distinct from this particular classification now because I have, you know, done X, Y, and Z. Um, and that, that, you know, occurrence, of course, being an action in the past, 
hopefully, or in the, you know, the, the present or the near future should be, you know, you should be able to say that, you know, right now. And if you're not, then as we've, you know, stated in the past, you're, you're pretty much cannon fodder or you're, you know, your food for, um, you know, the system, so to speak. But we don't want to, well, at least I don't want to, um, give the impression that, you know, again, all hope is lost because if you've got, you know, if you've got a brain, you've got, you know, feet, you know, you've got fingers, you know, even if some of them are cut off or battered or beat up and, you know, they might be a little swollen here and there or, or bruised, um, you can still get around, right? And if you can still get around, right, from, from here and there, you can still take care of yourself then you have a certain level of mobility that is inherent, right? But just like anything, you know, that it isn't used, you know, like a muscle or something, if it's not used or worked, right, it goes into atrophy, right? And it shrivels up and, you know, basically dies, right? But if you work it out, you know, if you stretch it a little bit, if you, if you take the time to break some things down, you will have the ability to uh, see what it is you can really do, right? And the reason why we emphasize, you know, study, study, study in an RV Bay so much is because when you go through RV Bay and you are looking at the various tabs on the, on the left-hand side, you will notice that they are in a particular order, Right? If you read through everything in the order that it's presented to you, okay? Um, but oftentimes, you know, people want to rip and run. They, they just want to jump in here and go, go there and everything else. But, you know, really, really take your time. Peruse what's in front of you. Don't just, you know, rush through it. Because at the end of the day, if you, if you skip over it, you're going to miss something that you're going to end up having to come back and look for anyway, okay? And rather than uh, put yourself at the, the, the behest of another, right, or the schedule of another, you could take your own time, right, and just be a little bit more concerned with getting an understanding about what it is that's in front of you. Right. Rather than always seeking what you think might be the correct answer. Right. For for your situation. And, you know, because we know in general what we you know, what we're doing and, and what we're thinking is, you know, standard flow. You know what I mean? It's, it's standard, you know, operandi. But it takes you know, a moment of, of thought to sit back and, and kind of look and see, all right, well, this didn't work. That didn't work. Let me try, you know, something else. All right. But we, we keep dealing with the symptoms. All right. Like Taj always says, we're not really dealing, we're dealing with the symptoms. We're not dealing with the root causes of it. All right. But if you, if you dig down deep enough, into whatever, you know, topic it is that you have interest on and you you go back, right, bef you know, as you're doing that or before you do that or, you know, after you've studied, you know, have some reflection time, what have you. But at some point, you're going to have to dwell on whatever information you've got from an ancient mindset, right? Because the prophet Noah Drew Ali told us and he directed the Moors when they, you know, as, you know, we study, study, study and everything, that at some point we we're going to have to go back, right, to that ancient mindset of our ancient foremothers and forefathers, okay? But you can't do that if you have no concept of history, you know, and realizing that history and law go hand in hand, you really can't say that you're really studying history if you haven't really been studying law at all, right? And we, we reiterate these things in as study, you know, principles and, you know, as suggestions, but 
you know, we're dealing with mostly grown folks who are classified as minorities, who for all intents and purposes um, are intended to be free, but for whatever reason have not been able to find their way out of the paper bag that is the, you know, illusion, so to speak. But, you know, more as we, we keep going, we keep building, we keep it, you know, demonstrating. And over time, you know, the hope is that, um, you know, the truth just kind of just reigns true and it, and it, it becomes evident, you know, self-evident for those who have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, so to speak, right? Um, and shouts out to, you know, all the viewers and subscribers um, on the channel and, and everybody who's been uh, paying attention on the back end with uh, the more book, learn more form. Uh, as well as activemores.com because you guys, you know, let me know and, and everybody else know that there is um, a, there's a crowd, so to speak, but not just that, but that there's, there's potential active bodies out here, right? And, and having different conversations with Moors, you know, from, from different parts of the, of the nation and the world, it's, it's become self-evident, you know, as we've said before, that something different is going on. Something and something different has to happen if we're going to continue um, as a people, right? But more so than that, as a civilization on the planet, right? And understanding that Moors are the the founders and the true possession possessors of civilization on the planet, you know, all across Earth. OK, we have a legacy that at some point has to be upheld. And if it's not, then, you know, as with past generations, there will be a substitute right in place. And, it, and those of you who study, you know, out of the lodge know that, that most of these lodges Pretty much all the lodges that I know of um, from, from my studies and understandings and conversations and, you know, buildings, they deal with substitute passwords, right? Um, and that is because, you know, if you if you studied anything about, you know, what we've talked about in the past, when the Sultan of Morocco and uh, his ministers plenipotentiary being the Europeans on on you know, their side decided to, uh, when the Sultan decided to give them a Republican form of government to, to be able to operate and do business, realized they were only supposed to really do it at the docks, all right, or the ports at which they were doing commerce, okay? But through their, you know, trickery and of lang you know, language, so to speak, and the, you know, the Fort Tongue <laughs> argument, and the, uh, in modern terms, the uh, Rockefeller economic education system, you know, plans that, that were laid out, economic and education plans that were laid out, you know, back in the early, you know, early 1900s, you know, 20th century, as they say, uh, based on the Christian calendar year. And those plans and those, you know, rubrics, so to speak, for education were trickled down and, and rolled over time and time again and rarely updated to the point that uh, some say, and, and this is not to be insulting or anything, but these are just, you know, statistics that I've, I've heard in the past and whatnot, and you, you're more than welcome to look them up um, to see what they're, what they're at now. Um, but most statistics are that people in general, right, and this is kind of getting bleed over from last week talking about the dangers of illiteracy um people in general have a have a low reading level right and if you have a lower reading level and I, and i think some say around like you know sixth or seventh grade right so if most people are reading at a sixth or seventh grade level because of you know You've got older people who may have dropped out at earlier ages and, you know, back in the day, dropping out really didn't mean that much, you know, so 
being in that age range really doesn't mean that much nowadays, but you know, it goes into the mix as far as, far as the stats. And let me back up as, as far as why I'm, I'm saying all of this, because and they, they were talking about this in the news as well. You know, just a little social commentary. Um, with the whole election and whatnot, there was this, you know, confusion, so to speak, about which polls to go by, right? And others were saying that the polls didn't matter and stuff, but anybody that's, that's taking statistics understands, or economics, you know, or taking anything that has to do with math, you know, any advanced form of math, whenever you're, you're building a graph, right, or you're plotting things on a chart, you have um, you have a mean, right? And you have that, that range from the mean, right? And that swing, you know, give or take five or six points or 10 points or whatever, is, is the variable range that, you know, they're honestly telling you that they could be right or wrong, right? With that, with whatever final number that they're saying. And people give so much weight you know, to that, but then on the back end before that, before I even put the graph together, you have, you know, various weights and measures, okay? And I could assign, you know, A, B, C, D, and, and E with different weights to try to even things out, right? Because I may not have gotten a, uh, a, a, a good enough battery, right, of people or a, 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 a healthy sample, right? So... I, I may try to skew the numbers, so to speak, to better reflect, right, what uh, statistically would be the broader populace, right? And through that, you know, you can manipulate all types of things, okay? But if you've never done it, if you've never, you know, worked with those, those things, if you've never actually crunched the numbers, right, or actually did the work, you may never even know that, right? And it, it would be incumbent upon you to either study, right, a little bit longer to figure out, you know, the intricacies of, of that, or, you know, to have the experience and, and just kind of wait for it to come along, right? Because you could ask somebody, but you may get the wrong answer, right? Um, and even then, the answer that you get may not be as easily interpreted because, again, one, one individual who's, who's a mathematician may explain the problem or the equation totally different from how somebody who's just starting out in third grade may explain it, right? Though we may be looking at the same variables, they could, you know, be weighted differently. And I could, you know, perceive them differently because I'm looking at it from a different perspective, right? But with anything, you know, it's, it's good to have multiple perspectives on it because once you get different perspectives or, you know, get different opinions, then you can kind of see what's going on, right? But it's it's rude and downright disrespectful to expect to get consensus from other people when you yourself have none, right? Because then the conversation isn't a one-way street. You mean, or rather, it's not a two-way street. It is a one-way street, right? Um, and that's not building, right? Because if I if if we were going, you know, showing to a construction site. And, and all right, I got a group of roofers, then I've got some people over here that's doing concrete, all right, then I've got some other people over here who's actually, you know, laying the, the bricks and everything, you know, I've got to have somebody to lay the foundation, you know, for the concrete, not to just mix it up, like somebody's got to be able to do the measurements, right, and know how to pour it, and know how to be patient, you know, to know when to do, you know, what to do with the concrete and when not to. And when it's safe to walk on, otherwise I'm going to get stuck and mess it up and we're going to have to start all over. You know what I mean? But pouring concrete is no fun. You know what I mean? That's, that's some hard work, guy. <laughs> and if you mess it up, you know, starting over is not easy. All right? But it can be done if you break, you know, some things up and, you know, kind of sweep it out the way. And then you can reset, right? But before you do that, even before you do that, right, you have to level the field. OK, so getting to that and on that note, um, I would um, want to touch into a couple of things because, you know, we put the homework out there for everybody to do um, and to check in and for the reading and such. But um, I wanted to touch on 
some of the finer points of the Berlin Conference, um, if I could, and you know, we'll we'll jump back and go over some of the other things um, that I put out there for the for everybody that's in the chat and in the room with us who did the homework. Um, but I just wanted to, to touch some of these things because I was I was you know going over the notes and trying to think about you know what what things to highlight for you guys because I don't want to go through everything and just bore you and put you back to sleep. But um, some of the things that I noticed, right, just in, in my preparation for you guys, um, just looking at chapter one now, I'm going to drop a link for you guys in the chat because I don't think, like I said, I don't think I gave this in the homework, but I want you guys to be able to follow with me. Uh, where are they? I can just share the screen. Here we go. But I'll drop it anyway, just for you. All right, so let's share the screen. And... All right, so right here, chapter one. Now, this was related to the Congo River Basin, so to speak, um, and the adjacent territories, right? And it says in chapter one, you know, relating to the Congo River Basin and adjacent territories, right? General Act, right? Act of February 26, 1885. Now, keep in mind that um, when... You're talking about uh, King, I believe, let me make sure I got this. I'm looking at the right one. All right. All right, yep. So, we're looking at this, this right here, part one. The trade of all nations shall, you know, enjoy complete freedom, Okay. Right there, they're making measures on trade. And then they make further measures on trade by saying, and, it, and keep in mind, uh, public versus private, you know, commerce, um, you know, law of the land, law of the sea, all of that good stuff, right? You know, this isn't for beginners. This is, you know, we, we should already be past all of that. But keep that in mind as, as I'm reading this. So, um, chapter one, part one, the trade of all nations shall enjoy complete freedom, Right? Number two, all flags without distinction of nationality right there. Without distinction of nationality, they're, they're you know, um, denationalizing the land, <laughs> right? And denationalizing the protections of nationality, right? So all flags without distinction of nationality shall have free access to the whole of the coastline of the territories, dot, dot, dot. And so that's just, you know, left wide open, okay? So they've, they've given free access to all the coastal territories, right? Goods of whatever origin imported into these regions under whatsoever flag by sea or river or over land shall be subject to no other taxes than such as may be levied as fair compensation for expenditure in the interest of trade, right? So right there, there you know, another measure towards trade and commerce. Merchandise imported into these regions shall remain free from import and trans and transit dues. Transit dues subject to review after twenty years. Number five, no power which exercises or shall exercise sovereign rights in the region shall be allowed to grant therein a monopoly or favor of any kind. In matters of trade. So they banned everybody else from, from creating a monopoly, but yet they created a monopoly. You see how that works? Right? And realize again, this is a general action. Okay, it's not really law, but they came in and said, We're acting. Okay? And realize that you know you can draft an act to form a body politic, but it has to conform, you know, with certain things. You know, you can create whatever you want, but if it's not in line with the law of the land, right, then it's set to be abolished from its inception, right? And the law of the land here, you know, is the treaties, the constitution, right? And for us as Moors, we've, we've got also got the divine constitution and bylaws that the prophet laid down, Right? as well as the Zodiac Constitution, okay, which is even more ancient in, in its inception, right, in its conception, because you, you know, 
look at all the, the studies and, and understand the supreme mathematics and uh, the science of womb man and man and Allah, you know, and, and this is kind of getting more into metaphysics and everything. Everything is based on zero to, you know, the number zero to nine. All right. Everything in the universe, zero to nine. Most computers deal with zeros and ones and just various, com you know, combinations of that. But when you look at, you know, man or womb man and, and our, you know, constitution and, and you know, make up our construction, it's all based on zero to nine. At the end of the day. And when we get to 10, that's 1 and 0. So it starts all over again. Right? Um, and we might, you know, touch on some of the, the other parts of the Zodiac, just for the for the record. But um, notice this. Part 6. All, all the powers exercising sovereign rights or influence in the aforesaid territories bind themselves to watch over the preservation of the native tribes. So they're saying they got to preserve the native tribes comma, and to care for the improvement of the conditions of their moral and material well-being, and to help in suppressing slavery, and especially the slave trade. They shall, without distinction of creed or nation, protect and favor all religious, scientific, or charitable institutions and undertakings created or and organized for the above ends, or which aim at instructing the natives and bringing home to them the blessings of civilization right now this is what they're they're guising on and this is under the same part right christian missionaries comma scientists comma and explorers with their followers property and collections shall likewise be the objects of a special a special protection right freedom of conscience and religious tolerance are expressly guaranteed to the natives no less than to subjects and to foreigners. So no less than to subjects and to foreigners. So they're, they're saying that, yeah, you're free as long as the rights are, you know, rele relegated or equal to that of a subject. Okay? You follow me? So, and then they just kind of go over the, the various documents related to the slave trade. And you can see the map here. Um, showing the, the various tribes and, and nation states that were present. And then we've got another, you know, map here talking about the free states. But let me just pull it back out for you guys in the chat. But um, I wanted to just kind of highlight that to, to show you guys and kind of set the, the tone to show you that all we're talking about Okay, is being able to come to a consensus, right, or some general consensus on some things, and from those points, you know, from that from that understanding, being able to move forward to where we're not having any more conversations as to as to who's doing what and why, you know what I mean, and you know, what side anybody's on or, you know, what role or position we think anybody is supposed to play in anything. We just have a clear understanding of what it is, you know what I mean, and we're moving forward from there, right? But to do that, it's, it's going to take some organizational skills. It's going to take some time. You know, people are going to have to pay their dues, so to speak, for it to, to manifest. Otherwise, it'll, you know, it'll be a shot in the dark and 10 years from now, you know, 10 minutes from now, it'll be a forgotten memory, right? And we'll look up and be like, oh, yeah, what happened with doing so-and-so and so-and-so? Well, yeah, you know, what's the name? Said they was doing something, but, you know, I ain't heard from them and, you know, God knows when, you know. And, and you're still sitting there waiting, you know, for the mailman. But the check's in the mail, <laughs> right? Um... And unfortunately, we also have other, you know, grandeurs of, of delusion going on to where um, people are kind of, I don't know how to say it, they, they have a, a, a concept of, of what's going on, but they, for whatever reason, you know, knowing what the allegory and knowing what the, what the metaphors are will still 
you know, kind of lead the people astray or leave out certain things. And I don't know if it's because they forget, you know, in the instance or, you know, it's intentional. Right. But, you know, you would think that with all of the activity, you know, at some point, you know, you might come to the same conclusions. You know, if, if you were studying, if you were doing the work, you know, because you, you might run into some of the same problems that others have. And, you know, being that you are, uh, you know, different person, you might have a different perspective. Right. But oftentimes people will will come with the same, you know, problems and won't arrive at any conclusions if they don't think about them. You know what I mean? Or, again, if they're waiting on somebody else to kind of, you know, give them a hint or tell them what it is that they got to do, you know. Um, but, like, I was I was telling, a, you know, a friend of mine, because, um, we were, you know, we were talking about different things, and, and they asked me, you know, what my take on certain stuff was, and I, you know, plainly, I just told them, I was like, you know, I used to care, I know I used to, you know, be into that, you know more so than, than the next guy, but, you know, nowadays, I, I really didn't, you know, give too much credit or, you know, credence <laughs> to what was going on, um, I just knew that at the end of the day, you know, they, they breathe the same air I breathe, you know, they got to do all the same things I do, so, um, as long as I'm still breathing, uh, I think we can figure something out, you know, and as long as I still have, you know, the ability to, to, you know, move around and I think, you know, we should be all right. But even then, you know, you can't stop a man because man is really mind at the end of the day. Right. And even, even when we transition, we know that, you know, we can do more work on the soul plane. And that's why the prophet, you know, even said that he was, he was going to leave us so he could do more work on the soul plane and actually help us from that level, right, and trust me, if you haven't tried, you know, the teachings of the the prophet of, of this day and age, you know, Noble Drew Ali, um, I don't know what you're doing, you know, you might, if if you think that you're, you're having problems, or you think that you run into a, a brick wall, some, so to speak, in life, you know, you might want to study what he, what he laid for you, because, you know, what he gave us, and he was truly a man who came amongst his own and was and, and they received him not. You know what I mean? Like Brother Wasim was talking about last week. He really was, you know, he really walked that walk, so to speak. And he was he was out in the streets with the people, right? Um we don't hear about him a lot though, because the work that he did truly was so impactful, in my opinion, um, to the point that he um, bankrupted the, the so-called, you know, economy. And if you look at the timeline from when Noble Joe Ali started his, his work and, you know, certain things happened. And like we always say, you follow the timeline uh, to the Great Depression and thereafter, you will see, you know, certain correlations. Right. And luckily, you've got a lot more people talking about, you know, the creature came from Jekyll Island, you know, one of my favorite books, which I still need to pick up. But um, I've, you know, perused it in, in my studies when I've caught it in the library here and there. But it's it's a it's a good book because it tells you and shows you plain as day how the quote unquote elites, you know, and your Bilderbergers and Rockefellers of the world came together with your politicians of the world right at the time. And renegotiated the the economy, you know, uh, or basically they renegotiated how they, how they were going to manage the economy and keep up the illusion, you know, of an economy even then, right? And then you fast forward and you you have the the transformation of, of the dollar from its backing by gold and silver, you know, per constitutional requirements, right? To this petrodollar. Right. And then we now are looking at the collapse of the petrodollar. And we, we kind of touched on that and highlighted on, on that last week. If you didn't, you know, see, go check it out, you know. Um, and, you know, we dropped the statistics on that. But. They're, you know, they really are dropping these T-bonds like nobody's business. Right. Because they realize a couple of things. One, that they're, you know, dealing with a corporation that's bankrupt. Right. 
Um, if you didn't think they had puppet dictators, well, good golly, Miss Molly, look at what's going on right now. <laughs> uh, and they never owned anything to begin with, right? Because, again, they're foreigners doing business on, you know, another people's land, right? And, you know, a, a lot of people have asked, you know, why is there not a lot of support for the, the quote-unquote Native Americans at the Dakota Pipeline? Well, when you really study the, the history, those who, quote-unquote, those tribes, right, who are under the BIA or the Bureau, Bureau, Bureau of Indian Affairs, all right, which you see a lot of, a lot of Moors used to try to, you know, dance around with, with those topics, but, you know, got slapped down and, and you know, Ibaka on that um, lane. So now they, they moved into the whole UCC thing. And we're and, and I got to say, guys, you know, the UCCs are, are great to know and understand, you know, as a tool. But it's, it's, it's a power tool. You know what I mean? Think of it like a jackhammer. You don't just run around, you know, like you're blowing bubbles or something with, with your children playing with a jackhammer, you know what I mean? Or playing with, with a, a um, I don't know, uh, a riding mower, so to speak. You know, a big dually, you know, with, the, with, the, with double blades and everything. Like, you wouldn't get out there saying, all right, let's, let's play water polo, right? And you're going to ride that thing off into the pool. Like, it's just not going to work, okay? Um, but... What we can do is, is really understand what the instrument is there for. And then when we move collectively, right, when we, when we get organized, we now all have a better understanding of what we can do to, you know, defend, protect, you know, and, and advance, so to speak. But when you're doing things as an individual, yeah, you might get by for the time being, but, you know, nationality is the order of the day. You know what I mean? Not individuality. And you can't be a nation uh, alone, so to speak. Like, you have to, again, you got you got to have some type of, of organization, some type of order going on, right? And realize that in, in these lands, you know, that we are standing in, uh, of Al Morocco, preferably, you know, Northwest of Mexum, you know, central of Mexum, south, and you know, or the adjoining islands. If you're talking about any of these lands, preferably nine times out of ten, you're talking about the the largest, vast estate, you know, known to man, right? Um, and you've got to keep in mind other things that go along with that, like your your connection to it through your nationality, through your birth rights, you know what I mean? Um, but if you forget those things. Again, you can always go back to the prophet. You know what I mean? You can always study what Noah Jolly laid down. You know what I mean? Um, and if you can't find where, where that information is, RV Bay Publications. You know, morestrector.com. That's why we keep, you know, repeating these things. And if you ask certain questions, and we know they are on RV Bay Publications, that is, an in, that is a silent because it's not necessarily going to, it doesn't mean that it's going to be a loud alarm. You know what I mean? It's like if you tried to rob a bank, you know what I mean? You were coming in there and you, you thought you was going to get ready to make off with the whole, you know, the whole store. But the, the clerk, you know, she pushed that little silent button. Is, you know, you didn't even hear nothing, but it's just a little red light going off under the, the, the counter. Right? It sets off alarms, people. Right? Because it shows you haven't studied. But when you're ready to, you know, go fight fires and save lives, so to speak, you know, you're so gung-ho, but you don't even have, um, you know, any equipment on. You don't even have an oxygen tank. You're getting ready to kill yourself or you're getting ready to hurt somebody trying to, you know, kill yourself. All right. Don't be in a rush to destruction. You know, that's that's what children do. They rush, they rush to the conclusions. They rush into battle. And they often get annihilated, you know, or they lose. Or they get embarrassed, right? So, you know, if, if you have, you know, any race pride, you know, come and nationalize, 
don't get caught up in whatever practice of religion that you you think you you're in you know what i mean and realize that islam isn't just quote unquote a religion or islamism which is our religion isn't just a religion it's a science it's a way of life it's it's what all with all, and, and this is in my opinion, what all true religions are supposed to do, which is realign you, you know, to your, you know, your your truest self or your highest self, right? Or whatever is truth to you, so to speak. Um, and then when you get deeper into it, every, you know, religion really is talking about cosmology and astrology. So it's tying you back into your or your divine, your ancient and divine origins, Right? And when we talk about being ancient, we're not just talking about being ancient in the sense of, of um, as most people say, operating as a sentient being, right? Because we're made up of stardust at the end of the day, right? So our beginnings, you know, are rather meek, if you will. And as they say, the meek shall inherit the earth, right? But you have to have a full conception of what it is. They're talking about, but if you if you stop, you know, at the first level and never dig in past that, you know, you might be missing some diamonds. <laughs> you never know. It's like, yeah, you've been digging three, four days. You might you might have been reading on there for three, four days. And it might be confusing, you know, but you've got to, you know, find those reference points. And I bring up the Berlin conference today because looking at the Berlin conference, I was able to find a lot of correlations you know, in, as far as slavery and everything, but even deeper than that, when I went back over it, you know, after some time had happened and passed, and I, I had some, some challenging interactions with some Negroes, blacks and coloreds, um, who were trying to say that Moors, like I, that I shouldn't be, be a Moor as if it was a choice for me, right? That I shouldn't be a Moor because Moors were the ones that put us into slavery, right? And then they'll show you, you know, crop pictures and chop pictures here and there. And they'll show you moors with, with turbans on. And they'll have guns and they'll have little vests on and everything. And they'll be dressed, you know, and whatnot. And they'll have other, um, quote-unquote, Negroes, blacks and colors, or moors, who are, quote-unquote, enslaved or captured, right, as prisoners of war, in shackles and chains and everything. And they'll show you those pictures and say, look, look at what your brothers did. You know what I mean? Um... And meanwhile, they're asking for donations and they provide no true services. There's no real work going into that stuff. They just copy, paste, copy, paste. You know what I mean? Um, or they're, they're pointing, you know, like a piece of stone or wood, you know, in the direction that any man could have found if they would have been told the truth from the beginning. Um, you know, and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you, you know, God, so to speak, or God all in drugs. But um, they turned they turned everybody's gods, you know, into dogs, <laughs> you know, and and committed war against you. And then you've got, you know, Dogs of War by James Reston Jr. All right. Conceptually playing off of that whole reality, but just throwing it to you in, in the title just to, you know, put it in your face. Just, you know, just to tease you, just to see if you guys is paying attention at all, you know. Um, but one thing I was shocked, well, I wasn't really shocked, but it was it was interesting to note. They they said that uh, almost half of the, the potential, you know, basis, electorate basis did not show up to vote. And that made me say, hmm, you know, I wonder how many of those people have a conception of birthright and nationality. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder if they've been paying attention over the past year and a half to anything that's been going on, you know, from active moors, like anywhere. And, you know, if there's an effect with that. And, of course, you know, we probably will never know, you know. Because um, nobody does statistics on Moors. Nobody's trying to count what Moors are doing, right? You know, because Moors, Moors died a long time ago. We supposed, we supposedly died off, right? But I say all that to say we we need to, you know, pay attention to history. Pay attention to law. Keep them, keep them in the same basket. Don't ever forget that. You know what I mean? They always go together. Because, as I just read to you with the Berlin Conference, they, they had to lay down a public act or a public notice, right? Um, before everything went into effect. And typically, there's a lag of, say, about three days, 
right? Give or take before something goes into full force and effect. But once it's out there, if it stands unrebutted, right, then it's considered law. Okay, if it's sound, if it's logical and everything else, right? But surely for those that are put on notice, once, you know, once they've been put on notice and they don't rebut it or they don't, you know, respond to it, then it's assumed that they know or they've acquiesced to the circumstances, right? Um, and in that, you know, that creates a binding circumstance that could be, you know, used against them in the court of law. Um, and if you doubt it, then ask any magistrate what their definition of territorial jurisdiction is. And they're going to ask you where you where you live, where you stay. You know what I mean? And if you don't um, take the time to study, you might give the wrong type of answer. And your the quote unquote jurisdiction is waived. Right. The, ch the, the ability to challenge the jurisdiction, rather, is waived at that point. OK. Um, and it's really, really hard to convince somebody who's a criminal that, you know, you 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 did me wrong and, un and treat me unfairly when they clearly gave you a chance. Right. But, you know, because we're so quick, again, to, to jump to the gun, you know, and wanna, we just want to jump off the poach and, and show how big and bad we are because we can we can get taxes off. We might be able to, you know, send some stuff through the mail under the Queen of England's permission and stuff but that's another topic for another day you know i'm not i'm not here to beat anybody up but you know it's just some some things that's going on that yes it's great that you can do that you know what i mean we're so glad that you can jump so high but we've got to get a little bit further than that you know what i mean you've got to get beyond just just being able to write writs and get to being able to draft legislation being able to enforce law, right? Um, being able to organize an electoral college, you know, or or a vote, you know, a, a, a national election, right? Because if if we were to if we were to say, you know, hypothetically, if we were to say, all right, in the next six weeks, we as Moors were gonna we're gonna come together and uh, draft a ballot, and then six weeks after that, right? And watch what I say. Six weeks after that, we we gonna say, all right, we're gonna have a national set of elections to have to have you know our board or whatever, and then and then you know we're gonna go from there and start organizing. There would be so much filibustering, so much confusion because you've got so many agents and and agent provocateurs out there who, once they see that move, you know type of activity in motion. They're going to, you know, be ready to, to um, you know, uh, flip a brick, so to speak, because they're, they're not going to have anything else to do. They're not going to have any more false hope to sell anybody, because then at that point, you're going to have to produce. Yeah, buddy, you're going to have to do some work. Right. You're going to have to take some time out of your life, donate some time. To actually, you know, do something for somebody else, you know, put some thought into something beyond what you're doing. And then, then you have to be, you know, humble enough to negotiate with others and work it out amongst them. Right? Because everybody wants to be right, but, you know, everybody's not dealing with the truth. Everybody wants to be right, but everybody's not dealing with the truth. So until everybody can get on the same page and we can deal with the same truth, you know, you're going to have confusion. You're going to have, you know, all this, this other stuff going on. You know what I mean? But before you even get to that, you know, people have got to be studying. They've got to have enough on their plate, so to speak, to not drown, right? Right? When when the floodgates are uh, are open, because if if we if we looked up tomorrow and all right, the grocery store is out of stock, right, and they're not gonna be in stock for the next two weeks, what are we gonna do as a people? How are we gonna eat? Are we are we really gonna wait for two weeks for the next shipment to come in? You know, and then if that two weeks comes and only half of the shipment makes it, 
then what are we going to do? Are we going to wait another two weeks and, and pray and hope, you know, the next shipment comes in? And it's not so much an issue of, of whether or not we believe in the next person. It's just a question of what are you going to do if it doesn't work out? Do you have any thoughts in mind? You know, do you have any backup plans in mind if, if the ish hits the fan? Right? And if you don't, now's the time to be, be coming up with one. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying, you know, disaster prep or anything like that. I'm just saying have a plan in mind. Have an idea. You know what I mean? You don't have to act on it today. I'm not, you know, New Nigel Hill is not rushing you. But I am letting you know that, that, you know, you need to move with a sense of urgency. You know what I mean? You need to move with a sense of urgency. Whatever that means for you. Because... You know, the time is running out for for us as a people to lollygag and, and blame the next person. You know what I mean? And because I'm telling you guys, for, for y'all to still, you know, caught in caught in the matrix, um, Donald J. Trump ain't got nothing good for you. You know, and he's gonna be real nice. And I mean that in, in the utmost sincerity. He's gonna be real nice. <laughs> right? But don't be nice, Moors. Don't be naive. Because if you do, you're, you're gonna you're gonna be trapped. You're gonna find yourself in a in a you know in a hole somewhere. Not really sure why you got there or how you got there. But I can probably tell you it's it's because you didn't have a clue about birthright and nationality. And if you did, you didn't act on it. Right? Because when when Cuba fell, right, and they were trying to protect the land and the people, right, from prostitution rings and, you know, from it being just a, a regular old fun house down there, they nationalized the land, right? And they, they made certain moves. Right in line with the international community to align themselves with the laws of of man abroad, you know, and they began to govern themselves locally, you know. So if we we take that conception or, or idea and just begin to you know just govern ourselves based on our counties, right? Which I've been talking, I've been saying this for for the longest now. You know what I mean? Which I, I'm just repeating stuff that other people have said. I'm not really saying anything new, because there's nothing new under the sun, you know. But hopefully, you 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 should see, you know, all right. If if I stay in a quote unquote city, all right, that city resides within the county, all right. And it has to follow the rules of the county, okay? And if you live in an area that, you know, has certain county taxes or, you know, things of that sort, you will notice how things are broken down like that. If you've ever paid attention to, to the paperwork that you're signing, um, as far as where the various taxes may be coming from, you know, or if you've ever looked online at any websites, you know, for the, for the corporation that, that's claiming jurisdiction over that particular municipality, um, over that area of land of the Morris estate, they will tell you what their various rules and regulations are. And you can find different holes in it and whatnot. But um, I say all that to say, don't get so caught up in what they say. Because what they are saying now is probably going to change pretty soon here. Right? Because... Uh, you've got a quote unquote, you know, CEO who said he he said during the, while he was campaigning that he was going to ban all Muslims. Well, I don't know how he's going to do that when Muslims gave Europeans and as Christians the right to be on this land, right? And when you go to the, the Treaty of Tripoli, which is very important to keep in mind, you know, Gaddafi and, and what was going on with Libya and everything, which is modern day Tripoli, you know, Tripoli and all that area, Tunis and Algiers, right? Um, North Africa, so to speak, uh, Kibulan and all of that good stuff. Um, we are talking about the same area, the same people, right? Same people, same lineage, right? Came West, 
And we're dwelling over here long before these Europeans. Right? And Moors, through the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1787, and, and all of his, you know, subsequent, you know, treaties, Treaty of Tripoli, right, and, ver and other versions, those were further confirmations that the European was under our rule, under our protection, okay? Because without our rule and protection, they were left with their pants in the wind. They, they were subject to get robbed, okay? They were subject to certain pains and penalties, which to this day, they are, right? And those who were, quote-unquote, the elites of today, they were given a certain science known as masonry by the Moors, right? And masonry in its, in its mundane sense is the science of how to build structures, right? Sound structures, you know, with firm foundations, and so to speak. But when we talk about, you know, masonry in, in the sense of the lodge, so to speak, we're talking about ultimately the makeup and character of man all across the planet, you know, and the universe for that matter. Okay? So let's not, you know, let's not be confused here. Right? The science is meant to make men better. Men. So that you know, everybody's civilized and we can we can operate and negotiate on, on a level playing field and it doesn't always have to come to fisticuffs and blood. You know what I mean? Because we're more civilized than that now. We don't need to debase ourselves to the acts of the beast in the field. Right? Because now we can think for ourselves. Or at least we hope so. But, you know, um... If not, um, there's, there's always others who will come by and, and come along and they will surely um, help you figure it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you, if you don't figure it out. Because if you haven't been paying attention, the international community is not going to wait for sleepy-headed Moors to get their act together. They're just going to move with whoever's moving and, and that's, what's, that's what it's going to be. Right. But you guys have got to, you know, we got to we got to be organized. We got to move as a one unit. We can't be splintered. You know, we can't we can't turn into what happened in the 50s and 60s and 70s into all these different movements. We have to move as one body, one voice. You know, what I mean, I always talking about one prophet, one temple. All right. Well, it's one government, <laughs> one vast estate. All right. So let's begin to, to understand and study how government works and then we can, you know, make some other moves that we've been trying to make and we've been talking about making. But, you know, that's why Taj and, and the, you know, everybody di who deals with the most order around table will tell you, active civics, anybody who did, you know, any active moors coming from the temple, any active moors coming from the temple will deal with active civics because the prophet taught civics okay and if you think he didn't why did he give a constitution and bylaws and why did he say you have to have it up and why under act one are all grand sheets you know enforced to make and enforce law why you know why is law even being talked about if if civics are not supposed to be part of the conversation you know and it's a very it's a very dangerous thing when you when you just have a bunch of of, of blind followers that find out that they were supposed to be leaders and not just blind followers, but they were supposed to be getting elevated and not just blind followers. They were supposed to be getting certain keys, right? They're supposed to be studying certain things and, and make, making certain political actions for their posterity, right? Or certain, certain economical actions for their posterity so that things would run smooth going forward. But typically, you know, um, we, again, we wait on the next guy to tell us what, what time it is instead of getting our own watch or checking our own watch or learning how to read a sundown, you know what I mean? Just take, you know, just take it back to that ancient, you know, sundown, you know, and if, if the sun's down, 
take it back to that good old, you know, ancient science of astrology and cosmology. You know, if you can find out where that North Star is, well, psh, buddy, you, you can get the ball rolling. Right? But if you never take the time to study, if you never care enough to study, then, and you know, and you're waiting on somebody else, well, then you got to pay the cost then. You know what I mean? You either do the work or you pay the cost to be the boss, <laughs> as they say. And, you know, it's really up to you. But at some point, you're going to run out of fiat. You ain't got money. You, you probably have never seen real money, right? I, I'll leave that for another day. But, um, yeah, man, like, you, you really, really got to think about some things and, and not fly off the handle. You know, don't get too riled up right now. Like, really meditate on some stuff and, and just put stuff into perspective, all right? If, you, if you're working right now at a job, okay, you got the job. You know, hang on to it. If you if you if you want to, you know what I mean. Um, no need to quit and you know want to want to curse somebody out or do something crazy just because you know other stuff isn't going your way. Work, you know, like like somebody who's mopping, clean up after yourself and and you know clean your clean your way out as you're going, so that you don't you know leave any any you know dirt anywhere, and you know. You'll be all right, but you got to come with clean hands. You know what I mean? And build them with, with different moors. Um, they're not they're not taking these dirty moors uh, serious anymore. Like the the goofy stuff that you guys have been doing, and I don't I don't name names because I don't believe that they they really um, do the respect or the honor or the time to be given. You know that that level of respect because what they do. Is so detrimental to the movement. It's it's unspeakable, you know. Sometimes you know the 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 anguish and the pain and the heartache that they cause. You know what I mean? And and they do it without any regard for any anybody else. And then they just keep changing the names or appellations, and they flip flop from one day to the next after they've burnt so many people. You know what I mean? And they do cute things like troll. And they'll leave little comments here and there, but in reality, you know, it's all hot air because, you know, any balloon can get popped <laughs> if you if you put the right kind of pressure around it and you, you get, you know, to the right points on it, which, you know, with a balloon, the surface area is so broad and so, so large, you know, you could, you could pick anywhere and, and you could, you could almost, you know, get rid of it just with that you know in you know just at any point really but it's it's all about you know who's who and then who's doing what behind who they claim that they are you know what i mean what are the actual actions looking like what's the results behind that all right and then what is the level of organization that they're seeking ultimately and how what you know what are the things that they're doing to get there right because we can talk all day long till we're blue in the face but until you know those certain actions take place it's just a thought you know it's just an idea that possibly could happen right so um you know kind of switching it up um, it's 7.43, almost 8 o'clock. We're coming up on the 8 o'clock hour. I wanted to um, kind of open the floor for questions, and then we're, we're going to touch on some of the things with the police power, which I think we kind of kind of already covered it a little bit. But um, as far as, like, things to look out for with the, you know, with the abuse of police powers and things of that sort, because we're surely going to have them, you know, happening you want to make sure that you're in contact with whoever claims to be the Sharif or whoever claims to be, you know, the, the, the policing authority in your area. Make sure that they're, you know, they're familiar with who you are. You know what I mean? Not, not to, um, you know, be crazy or stupid or anything, but really to, to just let them know, hey, you know, I'm in the community. I'm a national. I will be exercising my right to travel, so on and so forth. Hey, you know, you might want to even drop by, you know, and, and put them on notice of some things, you know, just so they know. You can draft up something and, and let them know that you're, you know, 
body politic or, or your group, you know, your temple are going to be out here, you know, and you can you can give whatever information you, you care to give or, or don't give, um, you know, based on whatever you guys decide. But, you know, just an idea, you know, to help maybe cut down on the confusion because you are going to have those out there who, as they try to say, are renegade moors who are just, you know, operating without without any sense or, or, or license um, from anyone, uh, which is interesting to say the least. But when when we start governing ourselves as a, as a body politic and we, you know, we really start making those types of moves, so to speak, um, there's going to be a lot of, of upset people. There's going to be a lot of boo-hoos because they didn't pay attention when they needed to. And they didn't get on board when they were supposed to. You know what I mean? But, you know, the, the calls are going to go out, you know, as I'm told. And if they if they responded to, then they, they'll get, you know, they'll be responded to in kind. But if not, then, you know, you might have to wait for the next go around. But I'm saying I'm saying this really to, to give you guys a heads up. You know what I mean? To kind of give you guys some some forewarning. Because going in into uh, Christian County year 2017... You know, it can it can be the best of the best or the worst of the worst for some people. You know what I mean? And I'm really, you know, this is not GL talking right now. I'm really trying to help you guys see, if you haven't already seen, that, you know, these Europeans don't have your best interests at heart. You know, if if you've been dealing with somebody that, that has shown themselves and proven themselves to be a habitual liar and to never, ever, 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 ever 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 having your best interest at heart why would you listen to them why would you do anything that they told you to do you know what i mean other than than at the butt of a damn gun or excuse my language at the butt of a sword you know what i mean and even then why if you've studied wouldn't you understand and overstand you know that you can even rise beyond that if if you are operating in truth right because if you're operating in truth and, and you're threatening me with falsehoods, right, I'm pretty sure there's a there's a, a violation for that somewhere. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure there's something I could charge you with uh, starting around, you know, Title 18 somewhere in there. I don't know. Maybe 241. Maybe 242. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. But I, I want to open up the floor to you guys um, for questions and comments. Um, so you guys can turn on your videos, turn on your mics, um, you know, let me know in the chat who we got, who's, who's here and all of that good stuff. Um, and, you know, just let me know if you got any questions. And if you can't see it, it should be a little box in your bottom right hand corner. I don't know what you guys are looking at on your end, but, uh, you know, shoot me some questions if you got any and, yeah, well, we're waiting on that. Let me get some tunes going so you guys, you know, can think of something and, and you know, take a little break, get you some uh, some juice and cookies or whatever, you know, get you some snacks, and then we're going to finish up, you know, for the for the end of class this evening. All right? Prophecy of soldiers with bayonets, Marshall. All right. <laughs> Watch for democracies, hypocrisy, philosophies, fear and shock factories, pseudo all mockeries and poppy fields, blocking swinging shops without rocking shields, industry the mind for a person sports and sovereign wheels, coffin fields empty, buried in the battlefields, working on the streets is walking in some cattle fields. King out for bruiser, love a mental snoozing, sleepwalking and talking, cell phones are soothing, minds disappearing, genetic memory erasing, don't even have a job or they get you for tax evasion, hot like a frying pan, crying fam, lying men, use got inspired men, no loyalty, just buying friends, no credit, death slaves, walking over paved graves, enslaved, enraged, marriage to death, prearranged, Mike Sufi genie, bomb tracks bikini, stupid niggas call my best bucket high when they see me, but won't ask a thing or drink the water that I drink. But when the pole comes, they're kissing on the drink. They'd rather drink a rapper's flow from the black fountain. Pipe Piper got the jet, lined up in the thousands. Confusion with illusions, infusion with sorcery. Won't give up my birthright no matter what they offer me. No deal. Push the red button, I'm going home. Oh, oh, close my eyes, meet Yasanel and Vendor. The fire that we burn roll, make them all shake. It's like 
Islam is on ground sheet, not spelled like J. Open minds, not sky, don't when you enter my zone. I wouldn't call it murder when I snap the neck of my clone. Trying to escape with the Morris Temple Charter. Peter's face the father, no making me a martyr. Sir, I am larger. Aura is my armor when I plant a seed in man's soil round farmer. Use the armor, I sort of like an almanac. Keep listening to sleepless hip hop insomniac. Morris MC, call me that acquiesce, don't fall back, just fall back. Any rapper after 95, all whack. Their flow just trickles like drops on icicles. Rappers need training wheels on their rhymesicles. Keep people's mind pickled in a lost realm. When it comes to Morris MCs, I'm at the helm. questions today so I'm just gonna um, end by reading this uh, short excerpt from uh, the Bhagavad Gita right um, and this is on page 269 of this particular book I want to say it's like uh, chapter 32 parts under part 6 or whatever I'm not really sure how, to, how it's broken up exactly but you know anyway um, versus chapters versus verses and everything but anyway uh, 32. He is a perfect yogi who, by comparison to his own self, sees the true equality of all beings in both their happiness and their distress. O Arjuya. Right? And then right up under it, it says, uh, One who is Krishna conscious is a perfect yogi. He is aware of everyone's happiness and distress by dint of his own personal experience. The cause of the distress of a living entity is forgetfulness of his relationship with God. And the cause of happiness is knowing Krishna to be the supreme enjoyer of all the activities of the human being, the proprietor of all lands and planets, and the sincerest friend of all living entities. The perfect yogi knows that the living being who is conditioned by the modes of material nature is subjected to the threefold material miseries due to forgetfulness of his relationship with Krishna. All right? And because one and because one in Krishna consciousness is happy, he tries to distribute the knowledge of Krishna everywhere. Since the perfect yogi tries to broadcast the importance of becoming Krishna of becoming Krishna conscious, he is the best philanthropist in the world. And he is the dearest servitor of the Lord. Nakatasman. Oh man. I'm not I can't even pronounce that. Alright. <laughs> In other words, a devotee of the Lord. Sorry. <laughs> In other words, a devotee of the Lord always looks to the welfare of all living entities. Yeah, I, I really did not want to mess that up. Sorry. Um of all living entities. And in this way, he is factually the friend of everyone. He is the best yogi because he does not desire perfection in yoga for his personal benefit, but tries for others also. He does not envy his fellow living entities. Here is a contrast between a pure devotee of the Lord and a yogi interested only in his personal elevation. The yogi who has withdrawn to a secluded place in order to meditate, to meditate perfectly may not be as perfect as a devotee who is trying his best to turn every man toward Krishna consciousness. And with that, I, um, I'm i going to go on and end class early because it's almost 7. It's, well, actually, it really isn't early. But, yeah, 8.38. We're we doing around that time. But um, 
since there's no questions today, I just wanted to leave you guys with that, you know, as the final word or thought meditation until next time. Um, and like I said, I don't know when, when we'll be back on point with this, but, you know, just, just stay posted. Make sure you get, um, get linked up with us at activemorns.com, you know, get signed up and everything. And, you know, you'll, you'll be abreast as things go forward. Um, and... Yeah, man, um, if I don't see you guys before the end of the year, man, happy uh, New Year's and holidays and all that good stuff, um, and, and happy 2017 to you, um, but I may be saying this too early, you know, don't don't quote me on it, but um, see you guys later, man, peace and love, Islam, I'm, I'm going to play some tunes for you guys, uh, let me see if I can get some, some new stuff to play us out, rather, I think... I think I might play something extra, extra new for y'all. Alright. Um, I don't, I don't think any of y'all have ever heard before. Um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, Alright. Uh, I can't find it. Alright. So, I'll just play this one. Alright, y'all. Till next time, man. Much love, peace, and love. Everybody in the chat, man. Love you guys. Thanks for checking us out, man. See y'all next time. Hey, check check us out. Send us an email. Um, you know, we, we're going to be making some moves, man. We got to do this thing. Peace.